Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a simple A-line skirt. An A-line skirt has no gathers or pleats in the top. You can add them in if you want to, um, but this way I'm going to show you will not include measurements for pleats. Uh, and it's basically just a simple skirt that's fitted where it joins the bodice and then flares out as it goes towards the floor. It's entirely up to you how far it flares out. I usually just go with the width of the fabric and then take it in if I want to. So the first thing you need to do is write down these three things on a piece of paper because that will help you to remember um, what you need to draw up on your fabric. So bodice front, and you want half bodice front, half bodice back and length plus hem. The way we work out the bodice front is by measuring side seam to side seam. Then we divide it by two because we only want half of the measurement since we always work with the fabric folded in half. Uh, and then we want to add 1.5 seam allowance. So that's our bodice front measurement. Bodice back, we only need to measure one side of it because obviously um, we're not working from the middle of the fabric, it's only on one edge. So 23 centimetres, that's already in half because we haven't measured both sides. Plus 1.5 seam allowance, so that's our bodice back measurement. For the length, all you need to do is hold the bodice up against your body. Put some heels on if you plan on wearing heels so you know how much taller you're going to be. And then measure from wherever the bodice finishes down to the floor. Then just add a little bit extra for hemming and seam allowance. And if you haven't tried it on with heels, I usually add about 6 inches because you usually won't get heels much bigger than that. So my measurement for my length is going to be 54. I always like to allow heaps extra um, and then I take it up when I've finished. So the way we mark that out on the fabric is quite simple. You will need a tape measure and either a pencil or white chalk or whatever you've got laying around. Try not to use a pen. So if this is your piece of fabric laid out, you've got it folded in half. This side is where the fold is. This side is where the selvage is. We always start from the base of the skirt, so make sure you draw out your own diagram with your own measurements. So I'm going to start at the base of the fabric, wherever it's been cut, and I would get my tape measure, and I'll measure up until I get to my length, so minus 54 inches. Then we need to add 2 inches above that measurement, so make sure you've got two marks left. Then you just roughly mark out a bit of a line. I like to do a dotted line so that I know that's not the line I want to cut. This is just a guide. Then you get your tape measure and you want to mark out your bodice front. So the front always goes on the fold, the back will go on the selvage. So we're doing the bodice front. So our measurement for that is 20 centimeters. We need to mark 20 centimetres from this point, curving up towards this line. That curve will be what goes around the waist or what joins to the bottom of the bodice. So we don't want to do a straight line, it has to be a curve. The way I like to do that is by getting my tape measure, putting my finger on where it says 20. I would start with that little marker I've made on the edge of the fabric and I would curve it up to wherever 20 meets like that. Then what I would do is put a little mark where 20 is, okay? And then I would just draw a nice curve. We don't want a curve that goes down like this. We don't want a curve that goes like this. It's just a nice gradual one, okay? Not going down and across, just a nice gradual curve. So for me, that was 20 centimeters. Then what we do, is we measure the length again, but this time we're measuring from this point. So we take our tape measure, we put it on that point, and we measure all the way to the edge of the fabric. So let's pretend that this where my finger is is 54 inches. So wherever my finger meets the edge of the fabric, 
that's where I put my mark. And then I draw a line all the way up and that's the side seam of my skirt. Then I will move to another three points. I will do a quarter, halfway and three quarters. So from this first quarter, same thing, tape measure, I'm going to measure 54 inches down again and I'm going to go a quarter of the way along the base. And you'll notice that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom because it's following this curve up the top. Same again, 54 inches. This time we're only marking at the base because we obviously don't need to mark seams going all the way up here, only where we're going to cut it. So that's my front of my skirt marked out. So then I would just go in and join up those lines. And then you could either cut that or you could draw up your back one and then cut them at the same time. So to do the back, it's pretty much the same thing. Because we started at the base, we've got all this extra space we can use with the fabric now. If you had done that reverse, you would have wasted that. So this time we're gonna start at the top and work our way out so that we're not wasting this chunk of fabric. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at our bodice back, 24.5 centimeters. Figure out where you can fit 24.5 centimeters in there. So you would just get your tape measure and go, okay, good, I can fit it there. Okay? And then you draw your line. Same as this one, so dotted line. From that line, we're working backwards this time, we measure two inches down. So remember to draw your own diagram so you know what to do. So we measure two inches down and then we mark our bodice back measurement. So this time it's 24.5. So let's say 24.5 was that far in from the edge. And we're joining those two dots to create the curve. So you'll notice that the curves sort of move in the opposite direction. You basically want the wider part to be on the edge of the fabric. And the point will be towards the middle of the fabric. Same thing again, 54 inches. So you would mark it out like that, do your line down the side, then our three points, so you don't have to mark them, I just did that so that you can see. Oops. And obviously my pretend fabric wasn't big enough, so really my fabric would need to be that long. But I always make sure I buy enough fabric so that it's double my skirt length and then I always have heaps extra um, and I normally use that extra to cut out the bodice lining. So that's your skirt front and that's your skirt back. If you wanted to add pleats into that, you would just basically lengthen this curve here so that you've got enough fabric to then fold it. So you would need to figure out how much fabric you want in each of your pleats um, if you wanted heaps of pleats, you could go as far as to double it completely. Another thing I'll show you later is a gathering stitch um, in order to create a nice gathered skirt. And in that case, you would literally just cut straight across the fabric and then gather it up. So this is an A-line skirt. I'll show you that other version a little bit later on. So I'm going to cut that out of my fabric now. Um, and then I will sew the side seams. I will leave the back selvage open for when I put my zip in and after we've done that we can do the gathered chiffon. Another thing I should actually mention is that you need to measure around your hip so that's the widest part of your bottom going all the way around. Measure that with a tape measure. Figure out what a quarter of that measurement is. Figure out how far down your hip measurement will be. So let's say for example, um, your bodice starts right under the bust. Then you just measure from where your bodice finishes down to your bottom. Measure that on your skirt 
and then mark out where a quarter of your hip measurement is going across like this. If your hip measurement is bigger than this line you've got down here, that means that this skirt is going to be tight around your bottom. That will mainly happen if your waist is a lot smaller than your bottom. So if you're quite um, curvaceous, you're likely to get um, the skirt being a little bit too tight around your bottom. So what you need to do in that case is actually bring the line out further and then you will sew darts by pinching the fabric and sewing down just as we did with the bodice. So to sew a dart, you maybe have a triangle like that, you figure out how much fabric you need to take off and you pinch that fabric like this. Okay, I'll show you on here. You pinch the fabric like this just creating a triangle and you sew down that triangle. It's a good idea to maybe watch how to sew darts um, on a YouTube video or something because it's a little bit hard to see um, with what I've got in front of me here. So now you should have three pieces. One, that is the front, that shape, and two back pieces, which will be both of them will be that shape, so they'll actually be half the width of this. What you need to do now is look for your cut edges, so the edges where you cut the fabric, that's your side seams. So you place the back over the front, good sides together, and you're going to stitch it down the side seam. Same with the other panel, you pop the back on top of the front, stitch it down the side seam. This back seam, where the two back pieces join, so that's where the selvage of the fabric was, you're not going to sew that until you sew your zip, so leave that open. So now I just want to show you how to sew a gathering stitch for when you create uh, the chiffon overlay. So for the chiffon overlay, all you need to do is measure your length, mark your length onto the fabric, same on the other side, so same with the selvage, and then you draw a line straight across. So you'll literally have a giant rectangle that you've cut out just by measuring your length on both sides. Because we'll be measuring the length of both sides and then cutting out one big triangle, that will be the entire front. So we will actually need to cut out two giant rectangles. So we've got one for the front and one for the back. So essentially what you will have This is your fabric, it's folded in half. My length was 54 inches, so I'll measure from the end, 54 inches. Same on this side, from the end, 54 inches. You can even do one in the middle if you want. Cut across there, that's your front. Same for the back, measure 54 inches, cut across there, that's your back. You would then sew your sides together, so where the selvage is, you would sew those seams together. The back, you don't want it to have a fold, so you need to cut along the fold as well. So cut the fold. So your front will be one piece, and your back will be two separate pieces, because you've cut it in half, okay? So you'll end up with three rectangles. One for the front, so one of the backs on that side, and one of the backs on the other side. So we've got front, back, back. Then we run a gathering stitch all the way along the top, and that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you on a small piece of fabric because it will get confusing if I use the large piece, uh, which is also black, so it's hard to see. So I'm going to use calico. 
So the first thing you need to do is adjust the stitch length on your sewing machine. So for me, this is what my stitch length looks like and I'm just going to make it as long as I possibly can. With some sewing machines you will need to adjust the tension if you find it's um, maybe snapping the threads or something. I just leave it as it is. I find I have no problem with the tension as it is. Okay, so with a gathering stitch, go about one centimetre from the edge of your fabric and you're just working across the top. So you're not working down the side seams, you're working across that bit that you've cut. So you start by back stitching. That secures the thread in place. And we're going to go all the way across. But when we get to the other end, we do not back stitch. If you want, you can sew two rows in case when you're gathering one of those rows happens to snap. I'm lazy so I only sew one and the rest it. You'll notice it's already starting to gather a little bit as we sew in the So I'm at the end, I'm not going to back stitch. I just cut that off. Now I can grab that thread that was loose, grab one of them, so leave the back one loose, only grab the front one, the back one's just sitting there, and then we can pull that fabric, and it gathers along the thread. So that's how you would go about gathering your chiffon fabric. You need to be gentle because you don't want to snap that cotton thread as you're gathering it. That's why sometimes people sew two rows. So you would gather that all up and then you would just hold it up against your bodice. You will have side seams in your chiffon, so you just line up the side seams with your bodice side seams um, and just spread the gathers out until everything matches up. So obviously don't gather it up too much, don't not gather it up too much, just line up your side seams. I'm going to do that with my chiffon now and I will show you what it looks like when I'm lining it all up. So as you can see here, this is the top of my satin skirt that I cut out. Um, cut out one A-line satin skirt. I also cut out another skirt exactly the same using cotton poplin lining. So we've got a satin layer, we've got a cotton lining which will go underneath this layer and I've also cut out my chiffon layer which has got all of the gathers going through it. So what I'm going to do now is line up the side seams in my gathers with the side seams in my satin. I'm going to pin it all the way along and then I'm going to stitch it down to stop those gathers from moving because I've sort of positioned them where I want them. I've made sure the gathers are evenly spread um, and I don't want them all clumping up in one spot now. So I'm going to stitch that down to the satin. After we've done that, we can stitch the skirt to the bodice and then we can stitch the lining to the bodice. As you're sewing, make sure you sort of hold the gathers down because you don't want them to come undone or to be like a foot push them to one side. So sort of hold them so now that we've, we've stitched all of those gathers down they shouldn't be able to move back and forth which means we can go ahead and sew this uh, skirt to the bodice. So here is my skirt with the gathers sewn into the top of the satin and here's my bodice up the top here. So I've got the lace stitched down along the bottom of the bodice. I've stitched the lining down so everything is nice and secure. You can't get inside it. It's all completely closed in. Now I want to sew my skirt to my bodice. So I've got my skirt facing with the good side up, so the side that I want everyone to see is facing out. 
I've got my bodice facing up as well. What I'm now going to do is flip the bodice on top of the skirt so that I've got both of the good sides touching. So they're both facing inwards. That way when we open it up, all of the seams will be enclosed on the inside of the dress. So I'm going to find my side seams of my skirt and my side seams of my bodice. And I'm going to pin those together first. Then I'll pin everything in between and then we'll stitch that across there. After we've done that, we can pop the lining on. So now I can go ahead and stitch it down. I'm going to use a 1.5 seam allowance going all the way along here. After I've stitched it down, I'm going to flip it back open and I will make sure that none of my threads from where I sewed the lace or the gathers down are showing. They should all be hidden within that seam um, because hopefully you sewed nice and close to the edge. If you didn't, just make it a two centimeter seam allowance instead so that those seams are hidden. So after sewing on my skirt to the bodice, I decided that I didn't like the gathers that were um, going all the way around. So what I did was I unpicked the side seams and I just spread this fabric out, the front panel, so that the front panel was going all the way around to the back. So now I don't have any side seams in my skirt. My fabric was wide enough that I could get away with that. Um, just make sure you try anything on before you go and adjust it like that. Um, so now I only have gathers running um, between the two centre front seams and I don't have any other gathers anywhere else throughout my skirt. So they're only down the front. When you finish trying on your dress, make sure you do the same. Um, make any adjustments that you need to make. Take it in on the side seams if you need to. Unpick it and redo it. I also found I needed to um, make the side seams and the lace a little bit smaller again once I tried it on. So there will always be little bits and pieces that you have to adjust. You're never going to get it right the first time. So please remember that. Next thing I'm going to do is make a neck band to go around the top of the bodice. So I've got my lace again. So this is, um, I'm working with this pattern called M6893. We used this section for the lace overlay, but I'm going, because I adjusted it, I'm going to use this section uh, to create a neck band. So I'm just using bits and pieces from different patterns. So this is what my neck band piece looks like. This has got a grain line, just like um, all the other pattern pieces did, and that grain line needs to run parallel with the edge of the fabric. There are different sizes that you can cut out, but I'm just going to leave it as long as possible, just in case. After I cut that out, I will need to sew the two pieces together um, so that I create a double-sided piece so we haven't got any yucky seams or anything, and then I'll sew it to the top. So now I've got two pieces of lace. What I'm going to do is keep them um, on top of each other like that. My lace doesn't really have a good side or a bad side, so it doesn't matter which way I lay it, but make sure you've got right sides together um, if your fabric does have a good side and a bad side. I'm going to just sew up here, all the way along here, and then back down here. So I'm leaving the bottom edge open. Then I will attach that bottom edge to my bodice after I've finished sewing that. So after I've sewn that, I'll actually flip it out so that I've got the nice seam on the outside. So here is my neck band. Uh, finished sewing it down. I just cut the corners off after I had sewn it so that I could flip it inside out without it being too bulky. And then I've pressed it with the iron so that it's staying um, nice and flat and not trying to unfold itself. Now I'm going to pin it to the top of my bodice. If uh, you decide that you don't want a neck band on your lace bodice, you could just overlock the edge um, and then fold it over. You could, if you didn't want to overlock it, just fold it over. 
you can stitch it down um, or you could even, if you've got a reasonably thick lace, you can cut around the edges of it. Here's an example of a lace that has been cut, you can see on the armholes. They haven't stitched it down, they've just cut around the shapes so that it creates a nice sort of floral looking edge. So you could do that if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter how you finish off your edges. Okay, so to pin the neckband onto the bodice, we're going to do it right sides together, so we're going to flip it upside down like that, flipping it over, and we're going to start in the very center, and we're going to pick one side, pick one side of the lace up, so we're only pinning the side that is touching the bodice. We're going to leave the other side loose. So we'll pin the center first. There is a marker on the pattern piece that says center front. You can check if you want to. And then we'll just slowly work our way all around. Now pin that down, I'll just stitch across there um, and then we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. So now I've stitched my neckband down. Uh, when I stitched it down the first time I actually found that it was a little bit uneven so I had to unpick it and redo it which was a little bit tricky because it's really hard to see um, the stitches when you're sewing lace. So maybe if you aren't very confident with your sewing it might be worth doing a bit of a base stitch first, so lengthening your stitch um, and that way it will be easier to unpick if you make a mistake. Now to finish it off we're going to flip it over so that we can see the other side. And you can see my neckband is still opening up like that. So what we want to do is have the seam in here facing up. Okay, This one's going to come over the top. We're just going to tuck it under like that and pin it down and then we'll do a stitch that sort of catches that seam on the other side and holds everything tucked in underneath like that. So just to show you again, we've got this seam here, have that facing upwards, pull the other one over the top and when you do fold the edge over the top of that other seam so that everything's enclosed inside that neck bend and then we'll just stitch along the edge there. So now we're looking at the inside of the bodice. Um, I've already sewn the satin and the chiffon onto the other side. So now I'm going to sew my lining on so that I can hide this seam here. So my lining is made of cotton poplin. And I want my nice seams to be facing um, inwards. So I want when I put the dress on to be able to see absolutely no raw edges, only nice seams. So all of our raw edges have to face the inside of the dress. So this is how I want it to sit. So I'm going to flip it over so that I've got right sides together. So I'm going to take all my fabric and flip it so that now I've got the good side of the bodice and the good side of the lining facing each other. There's my good seam on my lining, there's my good seam on my bodice. So we just line our side seams up and we're going to pin it to the seam. We're not going to pin it to this fabric so we're actually going to sew a bit close to the edge so that we're not catching any of this fabric when we sew it. If you find it easier you can flip all that fabric out of the way as well, so it's all facing one direction. So now I've got the bodice lining and I've just pushed all of that fabric up in. So now I will pin all of that down and then we'll just stitch probably about a one centimetre seam allowance across there. I should mention if you wanted to you could 
um, so chewy to your lining, that will help to create a more um, fuller skirt. It will help to make it just puff out a little bit more. So what you would do is you would get some chewy. It can be a stiff chewy or a light chewy, it doesn't really matter. Um, stiffer chewy normally goes down the bottom of the lining. So what you would do is do your gathering stitch just like we did on the chiffon, all the way around the chewy. The more gathers you put in the chewy, the puffier it's going to make your skirt. You would get a nice stiff chewy and you would sew it probably halfway between where the knee and the foot would be on your lining. So you just sort of figure out where that is and you sew that all the way around. Um, and then you come up to the waist and you would get a thinner, lighter chewy and you would sew it all the way around the waist. The reason we put the lighter chewy up the top is so that it can go over the top of the stiffer one and sort of make it less obvious that there is a big bump down the bottom so it helps it to be more gradual. Um, you would sew that to the side that you can see your seams on so that when you flip all of your dress out you can't see the chewel. It's all enclosed between the lining and between the satins. It's all sitting inside. You only need to put chewel in if you are doing a really super poofy dress and you want your skirt to look really big like a princess dress. I'm not going to put any chewel in my skirt because I want it to be reasonably floaty um, and slimming, not too wide at the bottom. So there we go, my lining is stitched to my bodice. You can see all of the seams are hidden inside, okay, so we've got my lining with a nice seam on that side and my chiffon and my satin with a nice seam on that side. So now we can go ahead and put our zip into the bodice and the skirt and then we can uh, enclose that back seam.